So, after the Democratic Party personally gift wrapped the US elections and handed to a guy their own presidential candidate described as a fascist, the recriminations, it's fair to say, have begun in earnest. Now, we should be very clear here. This defeat belongs squarely to the Democratic Party establishment, the wing of corporate lobbyists and dead behind the eyes machine hacks and consulting firms and all the rest. Because what they will now do is blame anyone but themselves. And they'll particularly blame the left, even though the left had absolutely nothing to do with this disastrous campaign, had no ownership over the campaign, had no involvement in the campaign. Now, Bernie Sanders, the independent senator for Vermont and the de facto figurehead of the US left, launched a scathing attack on the Democratic leadership after Donald Trump won not just the presidency, but the popular vote. The first time the Republicans have won the popular vote in the presidential election since 2004, and only the second time in the last 32 years. He announced it should come as no great surprise that a Democratic Party, which has abandoned working class people, would find that the working class has abandoned them. He goes on to say, while the Democratic leadership defends the status quo, the American people are angry and want change, and they're right. He points out that the very rich are doing phenomenally well, but 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and there is more income and wealth inequality than ever before. He adds, unbelievably, real inflation accounted for weekly wages for the average American worker are actually lower now than they were 50 years ago. Now, that's a point those of you who've been watching my video channel will know I've been keen to emphasize in my coverage of the US elections. You can't understand what the hell is going on in America, in America without looking at that, that basic statistic. It's ridiculous. Half a century. Way before I was born, I'm a geriatric millennial. And, and, and tens of millions of American workers would be better off when Richard Nixon was still in the White House. He goes on, Bernie Sanders, to say that many young people will have a worse standard of living than their parents, despite technological improvements and exploding worker productivity, and also cites the lack of universal health care and the highest prescription drug prices on earth. While American workers are unique amongst the rich countries in not guaranteeing paid family and medical leave. He also rightly points to the US continuing to support the Israeli regime in defiance of the majority of the American population, despite all the horrors it's unleashing. He also warns that big money interests and well-paid consultants who run the show in the Democratic Party aren't going to learn the real lessons from what he calls, rightly, this disaster or understand the pain and political alienation that tens of millions of Americans are experiencing or have any ideas about taking on the oligarchy in the US. But he asked those concerned about grassroots democracy and economic justice to stay tuned because he promises some very serious political discussions. Well, I'm certainly very interested to hear what those will be, and I hope he will help build a new movement, which won't be the cringe liberal resistance we saw under the Donald Trump years. Awful cringe privileged activists, not activists, just posting things online. The latest gaffe by Donald Trump, you know, all about tone, all about vibes, not about substance. Because they don't have substance. That's the problem with that wing of the pie. Now, what the results so far tell us is that Donald Trump is set to get around the same number of votes he got last time, back in 2020, when he lost. It's just a large chunk of people who voted for Joe Biden in 2020 didn't vote for Kamala Harris. She's currently about 13 million votes below what he got in 2020, admittedly with some votes still to be counted. But bear in mind, the US population has, of course, grown by several million since 2020. So a lot of focus now has to be on why a chunk of the Democratic Party sat at home or just did anything else with their life rather than come out and vote for the Democrats. Now, let's ask in the meantime why so many Americans rejected someone who clearly positioned herself as the continuity candidate of a deeply unpopular sitting president. We were told by that crew that the US economy was strong, and that's the problem. They can point to GDP figures and all the rest, and there's no question that the sorts of people running the Democratic Party are indeed doing very well at the moment. The economy for them is fine. But that's not true for huge numbers of Americans, vast numbers of Americans. The cost of living has surged, and that's something I heard over and over again as I travelled across the key swing states here in the US and spoke to Donald Trump supporters, among others. US food insecurity has increased 40% since 2021. Poverty in the US has jumped by 67% since 
since 2021. These are astonishing figures. Household food costs have gone up by 35% since 2020. Two thirds of Americans think the conditions of the economy are either poor or not so good. Well, that's not a surprise when you read those figures back, is it? But many of the Democratic Party loyalists were insisting the economy was booming and instead denigrated what they called a vibe session, suggesting essentially a sense of economic malaise was all in people's heads. By the way, just on this, I tweet an example of just how many natural Democratic voters have been driven into the arms of Trump because of this economic pain. On the way back from the watch parties I was broadcasting the election results from yesterday, I tweeted, I'm going back to my hotel in New York with a Muslim Pakistani American cab driver who voted for Donald Trump because, in quotes, the prices were too high under Biden. Now, a load of extremely bad faith critics, who I do not lack in bad faith critics, to say the least, then jumped on this to suggest I was denigrating the taxi driver, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. As I tweeted just before that, the US economic model is bust. Wages for most working people have stagnated for decades. Either you offer an answer to that or someone else will. But the best Kamala Harris could muster was I'm not Trump. That didn't work. What do these people think my views are, my opinions are? What do they think I think the economic system's great? Do they think I love the Democrats and Joe Biden? doesn't even make any sense. One of the people who jumped on this was J.K. Rowling, who tweeted a screenshot of a headline of a piece written by The Guardian editor, which reads how The Guardian will stand up to four more years of Donald Trump. She then added, Ooh, let me guess, emotive long-form pieces from Owen Jones, complaining that American taxi drivers aren't reading enough Judith Butler. Ooh, very droll. Very droll, J.K. Rowling. Very funny, very amusing. Quite the wit, aren't you? Something you've kept close to your chest. I guess if I was going to be, I don't know, a little bit pernickety here, I have actually written a Guardian piece about the US elections. I wouldn't expect JK Rowling to be one of my more avid readers. It's based on having travelled around working class communities in the United States, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and talking to Trump supporters, focusing on the bread and butter concerns of ordinary Americans. That's what I zoned in on. But I guess if I was going to be really in touch with the American people, I would have ignored all of that. Instead, spent my time sitting in a castle in Scotland, obsessively tweeting about trans people instead. The truth is, many Americans are hurting. The economic model here is bust. It's broken. It doesn't work. Well, actually, that's not true. It does work for a very select rich few. But stagnation and decline has been the lot of so many millions of Americans for so long. And if you rob people of optimism and security, then what do you expect? Someone else is going to sweep in and offer answers. The Democratic establishment need to face a reckoning. And meanwhile, those in the US who want a genuine alternative, which offers an answer to the real bread and butter concerns of people who are suffering, who are struggling. There has to be some searching questions. Because as things stand, the coalition of people, if you like, which I think would be receptive to the sorts of politics that the left has on offer is is divided. There are divisions between different sections, segments, which can be exploited. I'm going to talk more about that in the weeks and months ahead, because it's an existential issue. Because if we don't go act together, well, we've seen what's going to happen. We've seen what's going to happen. It will be far-right nationalism versus a neoliberal centrism, which has no answers, which will just get swept away. Unfortunately, we'll all get swept away as a consequence as well, because the future at the moment on offer is bleak and it's up to us to offer something different. Please like and subscribe, leave your thoughts and comments. Um, help keep the show the road at patreon.com forward slash ownjones84. Um, listen to the podcast. We've got loads of videos to come. Speak to you soon.